Go, go, go. Go. All systems engage. Song Breaker Day 405. Working on the acid dungeon today. It's a new dungeon. It's going to be all greenish. The boss is going to be a big tongue. First, I'm checking in my I just did. Made some, um, some walls can be totally open, which is really neat. You know, this is all Zelda 3 stuff, basically. It's inspired by Zelda 3, of course, you know. Zelda 3, you could, you know, there was no, there was scrolling, so you could scroll between, you know, there's areas that could be big or whatever. But um, to kind of do the same thing in a Zelda 1 style where every room is, there's no scrolling, you can just basically make a wall totally open like this. And then now we have dark rooms too. These are cool. So basically it just adds a lot of variety to the whole, <clears throat> to the game. Dark rooms, open walls. These can be really, these are just little mechanics, things that can combine together to make awesomeness eventually. You know, all this will eventually add up to a lot of variety in all the nine dungeons of this game. Uh, I need to check in what I was doing there, and then I can, I'm can. i going to start on the acid dungeon. I believe this is just the open walls, first draft of the open wall code. It kind of works backwards. First it creates the areas, then it bulldozes the walls. Because sometimes patterns and stuff can change the way walls work and, and stuff, so it kind of has to work backwards that way. Open walls, open walls. I got some ideas to make this better. It's not quite, it's not quite putting enough open walls in yet, so I need to work on the math behind what it, you know, what it, where it actually chooses to put those walls, and it has to be done after, after it even generates the whole world. After it goes and generates, then it goes into places, enemies, and enemies can sometimes change patterns, and patterns can sometimes have locked doors. And I don't want to have open walls with locked doors, which is, just doesn't make sense. So, anyways, some work left to do with those, but for now, this is a pretty good first draft. Commit. Open walls, first draft. Rough draft. What's up, Roba? How's it going, man? Happy Friday. Okay, let's get the acid dungeon started. Um, first thing, go to world. Start with like the ice dungeon. Vips. Call this acid. Acid. Such a cool name for a dungeon. What's up, Enko? Holy crap, it's sunny Sweden. 1 a.m., it's still hot. Wow. You must be kind of north there in, in Sweden, huh? Is it still it's still light out at 1 a.m.? Crazy. Okay, so style character. I think this style character here is going to be 7? I've used... No, I've used 7. Let me see what style cards I've already used. Zero is the overworld, C is a cave, S is a ship, stone is one, 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 ant is four, ant's not being used. Arc is two, psychedelics three, Psychedelic 2 is 4, Fire is 7, Ice is 6. Okay, we'll do Stock R5 for Acid. Whoa. Dang, it's hot for you guys too? In the Netherlands? Now that is, that is something definitely notable, right? It's not usually hot in the Netherlands at 1 a.m. Wow.
world's a changing place. That's for sure. Some rooms, some keys, some puzzles, dark rooms, open walls, items, gold teleport, music, background, ground, outdoorness, lightness, constant damage, no constant damage. Wait. Yeah, let's do constant damage acid. Oh, this is going to be called poison in the code. Wall thickness. Let's go to four. Friction. Friction zero. Okay, so we're going to play around with the colors. Whoa, the last few days were really hot. Whoa, 25 to 30? That's really hot for the Netherlands. Some grass shapes, tiles. This is going to become. We'll start with one ground. Well, no, let's might as well just do this. Five ground. Five ground it is. Let's get all these acid dungeon art pieces in place. Yes. Hey guys, what's hard style? Uh, <clears throat> okay, so we need a few different sprites. Seven points. Oh, <laughs> Bafu. At least it's not six points. I saw six points yesterday. Oh, it's hard techno. Oh, hard style. Okay. Level. We need all the stuff that six has. We name it five. Five entrance. Five ground. Five light pillar. Getting all these assets in place, and then I'll get them rendered out. What's up, DuPont? Yo, the game's going great. That's the dungeon. <laughs> Salad dogs, what's up, man? Yeah, I know. Isn't it great naming something acid? And then it could be it could be acid acid or it could be like just like hydrochloric acid stuff that's like really dangerous. It's supposed to be really dangerous stuff, but is it? Is it? Alright, so we got eleven of those, eleven of those. Good. Okay, I copied all the right things. Now I just gotta open all these up. Export all this art. We'll have everything in place so I can go and like draw new stuff for Dungeon 5 style. 
to the wall. The wall. Has everything like this. Yeah, totally, right? Yep. Makes it kind of clear. It's it's both. It's both. It's both dangerous acid and the other kind of acid. Which is dangerous in its own right, in ways. Gotta be careful. Sheets. Level. Now, Waldor, I think, has like a. Oh, yeah, there's Waldor and then Waldor Ground. So this is five Waldor. And then the. No, wait, this one's Ground. And if I just turn off the Ground thing. This is the wall door, so, so the z-ordering will be all right. Okay, back to five wall. This thing is all set up so convenient. Just got to render this thing out. It's got a whole bunch of frames, and it's done. Just got to draw some different walls and stuff, and this will look good. It'll work good, I mean. Level. All right, next up, what we got? What we got? Statue. I think I got to call this five statues zero. Yeah. Okay, so five statues, zero. Oh, wait. No. That won't work. Photoshop doesn't like to export. Um, it doesn't like to render video if there's only one frame. It just doesn't work. Okay, we're in the right place still. Five statues, zero. And this sconce. Same thing, I think. Six gone, zero. There's only one of these frames. Got to manually export it. Five sconce gone, zero. Five pillar tall. I think the same thing, yeah. All these single frames. So the strategy I've been using to do all the dungeons for Songbringer is uh, to, to I'm doing sketches really. I'm doing the dungeon kind of in a sketchy version. Uh, I'll do it once, it'll take me like a week or whatever to get a single dungeon kind of sketched out. And then later on, maybe a month from now or something, I'll go back and I'll spend another week on that same dungeon and make it way more awesome, right? Once you've kind of got things sketched out and in place maybe the boss is done there's a few enemies already for it the dungeon feels unique the music is kind of started that sketch version is done um it makes it really easy to just kind of come back and take and after you've taken a break from it it's just nice to come back to it and go oh da, this is just do this change a little art here change a little art there um add some enemies add some more new um, traps and stuff and then all of a sudden you've got a, a refined dungeon so anyways two weeks per dungeon but one week at first and that's where I'm at right now I'm doing that first initial week with all these dungeons and stuff yeah when you're fresh exactly yeah it's that freshness that really makes the the second pass really awesome it's like you it seems magical it seems like what in a, in a week, it seems like you just did so much, but really it's because you you laid down the foundation first and you and you were fresh doing this the polish part. Okay, so let's render this out. Five pillar two level. Five pillar one. 
Like all this stuff is a pretty good example. All this art is not going to be unique for the Acid Dungeon yet. Um, it'll be differently colored, which will kind of make it look a little bit different. But I won't. I won't go and redraw everything here until I go to the polish phase, probably. What's up, Belita SCV? Yeah, totally. It does apply well to game dev in general, right? Yeah, that's a good strategy, huh? Game devs out there. I probably learned that from some other game dev along the way. Refining when you're when you're fresh, or having somebody on your team that's fresh refine for you. If you work in a team, this is the light pillar. There's three of them. Oh yeah, it's already set up for rendering. I love these ones. They're so easy to export. Same with the ground here. Let's get that exported. Five ground level. And then the entrance is the last bit. Okay, so I don't know what this um, I don't know what this boss will look like just yet. So maybe I won't export that layer first, but I'll name it five entrance statue, five entrance path, five entrance back. Claim. Oh wait, that is it. Oh, oh, okay. So I can hide that layer. Okay, an important thing when you're exporting from Photoshop and you got slices, make sure you do the all user slices. Wish that was the default. Okay, we got five inches level, yeah. We should get that. Okay, now we got all our assets exported for the Acid Dungeon. You so happy? Yeah, you took some theory and transformed it into code. Bubble sort. All right, nice. Binary search. Cool. Right on. What's the what's the next best? Bubble, what's the next best sorting algorithm besides bubble sort? Bubble sort's the inefficient one. Sometimes, you know, of course there's some, right, there's probably some applications of bubble sort that are perfect. Good for you, Elite SCB. Congrats, man. I know that feeling. Taking something you got in your head, an idea, and transforming it into code. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, those should be exporting, and now that should work. And oh, the world entities. We need an entrance. So we'll do five entrance, image, five entrance, five entrance path. Yo, Pete Wally! What's up? How's it going? Welcome to the stream. High five. Entrance, entrance, entrance. Should give us what we need. Okay, the last thing is to make uh, one of these dungeons actually the acid dungeon. Oh, before I do that, I gotta show you guys this. I was rapping about this at the beginning of the stream, but now that you guys are here, check this out. 
there's um there's these open walls now so sometimes a uh, dungeon can kind of feel more open like this it is actually the the world generator actually bulldozes a path through the wall so um and then there's dark rooms like this room here check out this dark room you're like what is in here whoa it's so dark create some light sources makes it a little easier So yeah, dark rooms and open walls can add a lot of variety to the to the game. So that's that's pretty awesome. That's a really simple thing. Long week, time to chill out. Right on, man. Yeah, totally right, Zaldongs. What do you, Pete and Wally? What do you do when you need to chill out? What's your chill out strategy? All right, so up in this create world, I'm going to do a hard-coded style for now. Dungeon 5 is already the swordless dungeon, so we're going to do dungeon 6 for now. Acid, so these are hard-coded styles for now just because I'm I'm kind of like getting all the dungeons set up and stuff. But eventually Songbringer will randomize the order of all the dungeons and stuff. So Fire Dungeon, you never you'll never will know which one is gonna be the Fire Dungeon or the Ice Dungeon or the Acid Dungeon or whatever. <clears throat> nice. Twitch, books, or cooking. Nice. I like that. Cooking is a nice relaxing thing, huh? Twitch too. Twitch is neat, huh? Twitch is cool. We it's like you can interact with it's like it's not television, but it's as real it's almost as Twitch is like as can be as relaxing as television, you know? You just kinda kick him back, you can kinda zone out, or you can interact if you want. So Twitch is neat. I finally bought a book. Like <laughs> I I haven't like I haven't read a book in a while. It's been too long since I read a book. So I finally bought a book. A sci-fi book. I can't wait to read it. You showed your dad the other day about Twitch? What did, he, what did he say? What did your dad have to say about Twitch? I'm really curious. We should be in Dungeon 6 now. He's like, hmm. <laughs> This should be the same dungeon right where I was at. That doesn't seem right. Why did it make it the, the ice? Oh, oh, it is, um, wait, no. Wait, 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 wait. I think it's just because I copied the ice world. Yeah, yeah. If I turn off the ground reflection. Wait, wait, wait. No, that's not it. Where's the ground reflect? Oh, here it is. Reflective zero. Let's make sure I got this right. Yeah, okay, so we're in the right dungeon now. Yeah, there's no friction. Okay, so now I gotta change the colors. Uh, I gotta make sure the walls are right, too. I, don't, I hope I didn't make the walls. There's this bluish wall thing. Oh yeah, I gotta change these walls. All right, so all these. Turn off that wall color. Re-render. And the same thing with the wall door. Oh yeah, this had the this had that coloring too. Ah, okay. So re-render this. Let's call this wall door ground. 
then this one it's just the wall door get this repacking those textures and next I'll start playing with the colors so these all these colors are kind of ice dungeon -y. I'll make them so they're uh, acid green colored Takes a minute to repack these textures because there's so many now. So many things go into the common texture. It's kind of crazy. I need to reorganize my texturing, my textures, because now I have this this new shader for the shadows. And so it kind of necessitates moving all of the shadows or all of the things that would require a shadow into the into a special shadow shader or shadow texture. So that's something on my list to do. So I'm taking constant damage here because this is the acid dungeon and I've got constant damage set to set on. I love the bridges. Lots of little lots of little new things in the game that are making things a lot more unique. It's really Really pleasing. All right, time to make this green. I'm gonna save a point, save it here. Ooh, let's go with a different HUD today. Forgot I added this HUD option. Go HUD minimal today. And save and quit. Colors, colors, colors. I'm gonna start with the colors I got for the, the poison slash dungeon. What other dungeon themes have you planned? Like the four elements? Yeah. Yeah, there's already those. So there's um there's there's stone. I can write them out real quick. Here, let me show you. I'll I'll write out the to all the dungeons that are gonna be in Songbringer. There's one is stone, um, which is kind of like the first style. It just kind of looks like rocks and stuff. Two, there's um, swordless, which is like a sandy thing. Um, three, there's the hark, which is like it's just like it's like sky, sky everywhere and stuff. Um, four. There's there's the fire dungeon, there's the ice dungeon, there's swordless two, which is like a different colored sandy dungeon, and eventually those will kind of look different too when I do the refinement for those. Um, seven, there's the acid dungeon. Eight, there's fear dungeon. Nine, surprise is gonna be the lightning dungeon. But it's going to be a bored Songbringer. This is going to be pretty badass. Songbringer is actually going to be one of the dungeons. Um, and then 10 is the tower. So it's this tower you climb at the very end of the game to beat the last boss. So those are the, those are the dungeons that will be in Songbringer. And then they'll, kind of, they'll be randomized, you know, like which order they come in. So that will kind of... Or add some variety to each, you know, each procedurally generated world. It will kind of be in different orders, and I might even switch up where some of the gate items are. The important items allow you to progress, you know. So it'll it'll all kind of work out. Yeah, Songbringer being a dungeon, I think this is going to be really exciting, and it'll immediately make it really different than all the other dungeons too. So I got a, a sweet plan for this too. For the story, so the story is gonna get pretty epic. I like when I like when story. I that's something I've been paying attention to when I watch Netflix and like read books and stuff like that for the last like five years. I've been paying attention a lot to stories and what makes stories interesting for me. You know what what do I like in stories and and so yeah, so yeah these these two last dungeons are gonna be pretty part pretty epic parts of the story. I don't want to give anything away though. What's up, Voice of Grog? Yo. Yo, yo, yo. What's up? 
Uh, wait, did I render that? I don't know, let's just render it again. Render it again. Render it twice. Render it three times. Why not? Could have a teleporter mechanic that fails and you have to defeat an interdimensional mini boss to escape. You're you're kind of on the lines of what I was thinking already. But it, but uh yeah, that's kind of giving me some crazy ideas too. But I like the teleporter mechanic. Because, yeah, the, their dungeons, the dungeons haven't had a really a teleport mechanic yet. Or anything that kind of... you mean? Do you mean a teleporter mechanic that could... Oh, you're talking about that. I think you're talking about something else. Anyways. Anyways. Very inspiring. Okay, so let's start with some green colors. Oh, yeah. I was going to come in here and open up the HUD. And look at um, the colors that I've chosen for. No, actually, Lighter Thief came up with these colors. Yeah, Lighter. I was watching Lighter Thief was watching one day, and he's like, "You should do some colors like this." He made a little palette, and look at this. This is his palette. This color here, that color there, that color there, and that color there. Look at all the depth here. The different saturations, the different hues. These are actually different hues, of course, the yellow and the green, or whatever. Oh, you're talking about through rooms. Yeah. Okay, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah, there's there hasn't been any dungeons yet really where there's a teleporter which takes you from one point to another in the same dungeon. Um so yeah, that's a that's something. And also you can do the same thing by walking downstairs. Um Zelda 1 does that a lot, you know, like where you walk downstairs and you walk back upstairs and you're in a different part of the dungeon. It's essentially a teleporter almost. So that's kind of what that will be too or is for some dungeons it'll be downstairs, upstairs. Some dungeons there'll be an actual tele teleporter. <laughs> How can you wear a hat? <laughs> it has, right? The earth has fallen. The whole earth. God, it's hot everywhere, right? We were talking about how it's it's hot in Sweden. It's hot in the Netherlands. It's hot here. It's probably hot at the North Pole right now. Okay, so we'll start with colors like this. Um, first thing, the dirt color is the ground, so this is the first thing to change here. And we'll make it maybe based on this hue. This hue is 116. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I don't know how I'm wearing a hat. I don't know how I can get kind of cold on warm days, but I do. It's ridiculous. I think because I eat too many things that make me cold. Like spirulina and, s and seaweed and stuff. Okay, that looks all right. A little green ground. Let's start with the rocks now. What hue do we got? This is 81. See how different these hues are? This hue here, or that hue there, it's like 116. This hue here, 81. Much more towards the yellow. It's cool that this gives, this is color depth right here. Color depth 101, playing around with your hues, moving things. Right, so you move things towards the lighter hues or towards the darker hues. All right, 81. Let's just change the wall colors. How the hell are my feet able to get colder in the summer in the southeast? Yes, right? Same thing happens here, man. I don't know how parts of my body get cold when it's hot as hell out. Hey, I'm liking this already. 
So we'll do, um, let's do some, oh, we need to, the watercolor really needs to change. The watercolor. Let's go with this hue, 65. <clears throat> the watercolor um, affects a lot. It affects the sky color, it affects the the ambient constant damage color, the, the the atmosphere. See how the atmosphere just all changed to be green? It's all because we're using that that different water color. So water's water's clutch, very important color. Um, next, let's change the door colors so they are in a nice complementary color for for this. I'm liking this tone here. Blue, 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 blue. Huh. Yeah, that's okay. Almost can't even see it though. Oh, this is that dark room. I'm taking constant damage because it's acid. I don't have acid armor. Nice, this room looks beautiful. These colors. Um, let me go back to here and play with this this color here on the ground. Actually, these these colors are might be all right, and and also the I want to see a locked door in a non-atmospheric room, like this one. Here, this is a good good one to try. Thirteen points. <laughs> Bop food not exactly being generous with the points lately. The last the last three times Bop food gave out points. It's all been under 15. <laughs> it's like funny, but I'm sure it's not funny for you guys. All right, I'm thinking about the door. It might need to be. It's orange, but sort of a complimentary orange color. And brighter gold. It's almost gold. Yes. Yes. Lucky number 13. Is that your really your lucky number? Oh, I need a key so I can open that door. Let's see what that door looks like opened up. Dungeon six, give me that key. Huh. Oh yeah, that is a cool color for the doors. Is it the right compliment though? It's like a little, yeah, I mean, if it were any more, let's, I guess I could try it a little more yellow or maybe, maybe just a little brighter of that, that version of that color.
Yeah, that does help making that a brighter color. Okay, I'm gonna play with the hue a little now. This is hue 48. But maybe if, ye if it were yellow, it's hue 56. Yeah, same thing with my hands. My hands get cold easy. And my feet. But mostly my hands. Yeah, I don't like that yellow at all. That looks bad. Okay, so we were back at 48. Let's try it. 48's great. 48 is so great! But I'll try a deeper orange. Mm, yeah, see now that's not doesn't quite really fit with the um with the other green colors. Okay, so this is this is kind of the complementary color that works for me. The last thing is the grass color. I'm thinking the grass color. This is hue eleven. Let's move it up a little. Maybe down. It's nice to have one color which is really uh, complimentary. Your feet at night, yeah? All right, the walls still aren't doing it for me because I know they are, they have this tone already, which is sort of this reddish brown tone, which looks really good for some levels, but it's not looking good here. So I want this to turn out sort of green. Where the heck is green? There, plus 30, plus 51. There. Nom, 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 nom. Right on. Oh, and then this allows them to be colored. All right, I gotta let it repack those textures and see if that the walls look a little better now. Uh, they're still kind of too gray. Whoa. That kind of works. 
making everything really green. But it kind of works. Now the floor almost needs to be more green. Now here's a cool room. So you come in here, you gotta push this pillar. It's dark, which is neat. Oh, look, and there's this. Wow, this is a cool little segment here. You come in here and you get this key and then you come back here and it's like a dark room. You're like, what? But it's the puzzle that allows you to get through here. No secrets. Yeah, that's a really lucky placement for those. Okay, so those walls are a tiny bit too saturated. Let's take that down to 30. Yeah, still nice and saturated, but not too saturated now. And I think I'm going to up the saturation on the floor as well. So there's that color. Try something radical. No, oh, man, it looks horrible. <laughs> horrible. But what about this color with way more brightness and a bit less saturation? Oh, yuck. Yuck. Also, the wall doors. So I'm not opposed to this hue, 115. But Terry color was looking weird. Uh, that's the same hue. Maybe just a little more saturation then. There, it's almost double the saturation. What's up, Felix? I'm working on the the acid dungeon today. Starting it out, I got some walls, or not walls, but like I got all the little assets and stuff like that started. Now I'm working on the color scheme for this dungeon. Yeah, even that, even just making the, the floor that much more saturated is, is like, it's kind of ugly. I need to take that back down. It was at like 12 or so. Maybe a little more. Maybe like that. It's kind of making me question the color of the keys now. 
keys might be kind of orange. Wow, that tiny little bit still is too much. That's better. Yeah, but the ah oh man, the rocks might be a little too saturated still too. Take that down five. What's up, Mr. B? Okay, I think this'll this'll do for now. It's about the right colors. Everything's kind of got this green, yellow, deeper green hues, except for the keys, which are kind of a complimentary, not really complimentary, more tertiary type color complement. Or, or quad, I don't know, one of those. Oh, let's make sure that the entrance looks all right, too, just to start with. Yeah, so we don't I don't have a boss yet for the year, so I have no idea what to put here. But at least it works. Entrance works, the colors are looking good. Goodish. Yeah. I could live with the colors like this. I don't got a key to get through here. What's up, Queen Fine Ass? <laughs> uh, I think though the 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 um the patches here, these patches of plant color could be. I'm thinking they need to be same hue as the water. Which is sixty five. I like it. The water almost looks like puke green. Looks kind of cool too when it's all lit up like that. All icy. Oh, I didn't know it still did puddles or ripples when it's all icy. Need to fix that. Okay, I'm going to wander around this dungeon a little more and see how all the colors are looking. But I think this is this is pretty good. I'm, I think I might just check this in as it is and ooh, give me a key if there's a key. I need keys. It's tough telling about the I got to turn back to auto hide the HUD cuz I need the map right now. Mini map What else does this dungeon have to offer? Yeah, so, okay, this is cool to see this, uh, the sky color coming through there. Ooh, crazy dark room. Oh, dark room with spiders. This is a tough little room here. 
Oh, and this room, you have to have ice to cross this path here. That's cool. Oh, dark switch room. Whoa. Cactus, give me cactus. Ah. That was close. Interesting. Interesting that the, the boss doors have this purple color here in this dungeon. Okay. What else? What else? Here's another kind of open sky room. It's kind of neat. Ooh, interesting. Okay, I do believe I'm happy with how everything looks in this dungeon. It's pretty cool. I like it. Good color scheme. Good good setup to start with. Oh, what happened there? Skybridge broken. Wonder why that is. You can get past it though. Hmm. Okay, that's good to check in. Good start. Good status. A lot of things to check in here. But I think all of these you can just I can use the add all command to add everything. Five entrance, ground, light pillar, pillar. Pillar tall, sconce, statue, walls, wall door, all the PSDs. Yeah. What's up, Teak? Yo! And, okay, so this was basically just getting things started for the acid dungeon. This stream is crazy pixelated? I'm good. I'm great. Is it really pixelated? It looks okay here. I'm still at my 720p. Yeah, nothing's changed on this end. Yeah, it might just be your internet or something, I don't know. Like blurry. Looks fine to you guys, some guys? Okay, cool, maybe just refresh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so this was just adding all the data for the acid dungeon, setting dungeon six to be the acid dungeon for now, hard-coded, adding the two different pieces of data for the entrance, and then adding all the other assets and changing all the colors. So get commit. Initial acid dungeon. All right. Huh, yeah, that's really bad. Man, that's that's crazy bad for sure. It's so so pixelated. It's like it's running at like 120p or something really really low. 
I wonder if it's just Twitch servers or something doing crazy. What? Push user? Don't know what you mean by that ice ice crasher. All right, now I'm going to start the, the boss. <laughs> quality options. Yeah, for the stream. Yeah, I know. I, I know I have quality options, but I can't change them any more than I already have. Like it's I've I've maximized the performance I can get out of 720p because my Internet sucks as far as my upload rate. Do you mean quality options in here? In the game? Like video? Or are you talking about quality options on the stream? Okay, where is this boss at? Please here. Here we go. Okay. So we'll set... Um, Save there. Oh, quality option on Twitch. Oh, quality options on your side. My stream has options. Oh, I think it's, I still think you're talking about client side though. They're on your end, you can change the quality. That's crazy. I didn't know that I had that or whatever. Huh? Or maybe they're maybe they're starting to do it for everybody now or something. Okay, new boss, new boss. This guy. Is gonna the, my my vision for this boss is a giant tongue. He's a conglomeration of other smaller bits of tongue. Yeah, it might be. It might be. I'm not seeing any picture from this. Oh, there it goes. Oh yeah, you do have quality options for the player on your end. Okay. Interesting. I never knew that that was there. Oh wow. So it's really it's really not for everybody? Wow. I never knew that. Thanks Twitch. Thanks a lot. Appreciate this. Yeah, thanks. So it's a basically the this t this tongue enemy is something it's a it's a it's an enemy composed of lots of smaller bits of itself. So there's like a lot of Man, this is going to be probably the trickiest boss I've ever made so far, but <sighs> got to get it started. Just got to get it started. Yeah, I saw that about applying for a Twitch partnership and stuff like that. Yeah, there was some there's some link you can click on to apply. Yeah. Should I do that? I don't know what I guess. I, I guess that would just mean more money for me if it if I. I don't know if people subscribe. Not more money. I'm not making any money from Twitch or YouTube or any of that right now. So, yeah, I guess I could start making money from my streams. I guess I've always kind of delayed doing that because I've I've really I'm only here to really my ultimate purpose is just to promote my game. You know, that's all I want to do is promote my game. 
I guess I've always kind of hesitated to tr apply for a Twitch partnership because I don't want to be under anyone's thumb. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to have to feel like I have to stream, you know, or I don't, I don't, I also don't want to stream for the, just for the sake of streaming. I want to stream because I want to promote Songbringer, but also because I want to hang out and, and with you guys and stuff like that. So what I'm saying is if I apply for a Twitch partnership, it might change my own personal motivations. And so I don't know if that's that's a good thing or not. I'll have to I'll have to do some soul searching there, figure out whether I would change how often I streamed. Would I stream just because just for the sake of streaming? Would I you know would I have a bad attitude towards streaming if I did? I don't know. Yeah. So, anyways, soul searching. Because I don't think it's any better for you guys, right? It's not better for you as a viewer if I was a Twitch partner. It's just the same for you, right? I might want to go to hell for the name I gave my utility. Yeah, it's called utility. What's what? Why is that going to? Why is that hellish? All right, so of all the, the bosses and enemies I've created so far, the snake spear is the closest thing. Oh, because of a lame name joke. All right. Wait, where is he? Was he here? Snake spear. There he is, snake spear. All right, so this is the. I'm just going to name it Acid Boss because I don't know what this is eventually going to be like. Okay, next, I'm going to get him placed in the world. Foes, create a boss pattern. Boss six, five, four, three, two, one. Ah! Style car five. This is, um, just do the acid boss, one of them. Boss, not sword list, max one, Z, two through nine. Okay. Oh, we still did the blob boss. Why is that? Oh, because the blob boss shouldn't have style cars. Five. Same with the drop boss. Yeah, okay, there's the snake spear. Oh, he's only got one piece of the snake spear, though. <laughs> okay, that actually might be a good thing to start with, the snake spear. Um, I gotta give the player some acid armor, because he's just getting pounded by the, the acid damage here. Huh, was this guy invisible?
It's hurting me. Well, no worries. Okay, so the, my what I'm thinking here is there's a giant tongue. He's just composed of a lot of little pieces of tongue. He's he's right about here. And that's where the base of the tongue is. All right, I, um, this is totally new territory here. I need to set up like a chain. A chain of enemies. Hmm. Your cat freaks out when it sees a lizard. Uh, yeah, I'm getting hot. It's a hot ass day. I wasn't hot when I started, but now I'm all hot. This happens a lot when I stream. Streaming and talking and computers on and stuff. Makes, makes a hot room. Okay, okay, okay. I can at least open up the file. Can at least make it a chain. The thing is, it's a lot of work. The thing is like, uh, I want each individual piece of this chain to be its own enemy, but yet for... No, this, this could work. This could work. What a... Hmm. Let's take off the auto Z layer. No flip X. Has a reflection. Has a shadow. Each piece of the body is going to have a certain amount of hit points. When the main thing dies. Oh, it's a it's a lot of work to create this boss. This guy's kind of a totally unique, totally unique mechanic. It's a, it's essentially a snake. It's a it's a it's one enemy, which is the head, if you will, and the head can kind of lead all the other pieces of the chain. So I need to what I want to do is create a chain of enemies that are all that really only have one guy, which determines where they all the rest of them move, and then. But all the other pieces of the chain need to have their own hit points, their own collision boxes, and all that. It's just that they can't think. They're, they're like mindless. Unless you happen to kill the head, and then the, next, and then the next enemy in the chain becomes the new head. So that's where it gets really, really complicated. It's like, all right, there's, there's got to be a simple way to do that. I've already got the I've already got a system in place to chain and um, entities together, but I don't have any el elasticity to that system yet. So I need to add elasticity as well. So like if the head moves, it can kind of elastically move the rest of the chain. All right, or if you kill it halfway, are there two heads? Oh man.
So this guy might take a minute to create. It might take me three or four days just to create this boss. But I think this will be. I think it'll be worth it. I've had this enemy in a mind for a long time. And uh, so yeah. And also since it's a tongue, or imagine it's like a big old tongue, like the bottom of the tongue has to like remain constantly in place. It never can move. Yeah, I could cache some movement vectors. Yeah, but that would that would change the whole system I've got in, in place with chaining together position components. So the way it works now is it chains position components. So each position component can have a chain. This is this is a chain basically is just an, an entity that it sits next to or, or is chained with. So every position component has a chain to the left and a chain to the right. And then I've got these two factors in here for the elasticity, the distance of the chain between it and the next piece of the chain, and then the springiness of the chain. So I've got those factors in there. I just haven't done the math and done all the work to, to make this system work for the elasticity. But I have done the part with the chaining. So I can chain together these positions. Um, but yeah, I guess the really this the the way to do a really complex enemy like this is to start with the simplest thing I can imagine. You know, this is what, it's it's easy to get overwhelmed when you psych yourself out. But if you just focus on something simple, you know that's the way to go. I think. Um, so I'll just I'll start with just the head. Yeah, I'll just start with the head. Okay, I could do that. I could do a head. Right, or two pieces. Which I'll get to two pieces in a second. I'll, I'll start with one piece. Um, let's say it has no mass. So it can kind of bounce. Maybe it has half mass. Damage, half, movement. Can't move on to static, switch. What's up, Stileb? Doesn't ever pathfind, can't ever go beyond the boundary. Does have gravity. Doesn't have vector movement. Uh, okay, same sound effects. Does have the sound, what's that sound, drop boss. There's this sweet sound effect for ambiences and bosses. There we go, boss loop. What the hell? And I always play the boss loop initially so we'll set a timer and a target initially there's no vectors no up no down sneak blah, 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 blah. none of that stuff I'm just gonna make him jump at first because that's what I'm kind of imagining for the head of this tongue snake thing it's like the head jumps and then if I can get the elasticity and everything working well I can when I get the elasticity and everything working the head will jump and then the other pieces will kind of bounce with it but elasticity uh, what's up travesty this is C++ the, uh, what you're looking at here, this is the custom scripting language I've written for this game. But this is C++. Okay, so I got the initial timer and everything set. The next thing I wanted to do is make him jump. So I'm going to start with the jiter. The jiter has a nice hop sequence and stuff. Cesar, what's up? Yo! Can, can you now? The game's going great, man. It's going excellent. Uh, 
Okay, let's see if that this works if I add in some hopping. I don't know. This is weird. This is the this is the hardest boss I've ever tried to start creating. Okay, he is hopping. That's good. I can hit him now. That's good too. Hey, this isn't as hard as I thought. All right, cool. Okay, so that's the the vision for this is to have a giant tongue. The base of the tongue is going to be about here, right? And it always stays constant. The base of the tongue is right here. And then there's like four or five different pieces of the tongue. And then there's the head of the tongue, which is this part here. And the head of the tongue can bounce around and move the rest of the pieces of the tongue too. Thanks, Travis. I appreciate it, man. Uh, so... Yeah, something like this. Let's offset the shadow. So the shadow looks a lot better. And I guess if I can do one piece of the tongue, I could do two, right? Oh, that's way too much offset. Uh, I stream, no, I don't stream every day, but I stream about three to five days a week. Usually five days a week. Usually weekdays. Okay, so the next thing is to add children. So small children, little entities that follow this entity around. This is the where it starts to get tricky though. <laughs> I keep on going, oh my god, because I feel overwhelmed before I even create this enemy because I know this is the most complicated enemy I've ever tried to create, so. Every single one of these child entities has all of the same so we'll just call this children one so all of these have all the same thing no flip x reflection one shadow health is there a death spawn function you mean like something that happens when something else dies I can add that. That's a good idea. Like maybe when the when, maybe when the when the head dies, it transfers the responsibility for for guiding the rest of the tongue or whatever. I think I need to put an offset position here to make it work right too. Like if I do an offset negative twenty zero, it'll always put the child on the left. I think now oh I don't know what happened he just disappeared Shazzle where'd you go man I think he's still he might still be there oh that sucks what happened What percent do you think you are towards being finished? Randomly spawning terrain, yeah? Oh man, I am i don't know how close I am to being finished. 80% maybe? Yeah, totally, like kill, yeah. Spawn a new head, yeah. So let's see if this killed it. If so I just take away the position attribute. No, he disappears again. Shazzle. Okay, if I take away this entity completely. Okay, he works again. If I just have
oh, this might not have any kind of idea what it's supposed to look like. What's up, Space for Name? Yo! What's up, Lenny? Hello, man. Welcome to the stream. So he disappeared again, huh? Just disappeared. Uh, what if I get rid of everything except for the render component? It shouldn't just disappear. Where the hell is he going? Oh yeah, look at this. It's okay now. So there's some component which is messing it all up. I'll start I'll start with removing the move and the input. Hey, it's still there. Okay, so something in the move or the input is causing it to just disappear. Nice, you're learning Java? Right on. I think it was the move component. That makes sense. The move component. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so take the move component away and then add this position thing and maybe this will make it so it still can be. Nope, I still don't see it. I don't see this that second chained entity. Huh. Where are you? <laughs> yeah, Jib's killing it, right? Yeah, you're welcome, man. Suppress warnings unchecked. Oh, it looks like so generics are Java's version of like templates, kind of in C. I don't really know Java. I'm just trying to get something to show up as a, as a child. What else has children? I'm gonna comment out every one of these Entities and we should this should work snake spear zero It's like t yeah, it's like templates. Yeah Huh Still nothing I don't see any child Oh, unless I'm just totally missing something here. Maybe it's not at all using that position. No, it has to be, because I know these change their positions based on their parent.
Sup, Kongi? Man, it's crazy. I don't understand why that guy's not having a child at all. What if I change this to be something bad? I know that's a bad name. But it has no problem whatsoever. Is this even doing this? Children. One. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to have to chalk this up to a mystery for now. And at least just get this guy working as a boss first. How is the code handling the creation of the child? No, it's not it's not reusing a sprite. It's it creates a separate entity for every one of the children. So for every child, it goes and creates a separate entity and then goes and creates components. So it's creating a position component, a render component, and all that. Uh I'm not gonna dig too much into more into it right now, because it's just kind of uh it's kind of turned into a bitch. I don't really want to. I don't really want to work on. Sometimes when when code is too much of a bitch, you know, it's like you might as well take a break. That's at least in in my opinion, it's always helped me to take breaks from things that that are just kind of like complete mysteries to me and voodoo, you know. So yeah, I don't know. I'm just not right in the right perfect headspace to get this that part started. So I'm gonna work on something else that's easier. It just kind of gets me in the flow like this. I need to get the boss attribute started for this guy. So he has a boss, he has a title, a description. Just leave those blank. Um, this health component should have an explosion size. is animations you should at least have an idle this mentality yes exactly exactly yep i'm right there with you so this guy should be able to explode now at least let's make him just explode Okay, cool. He does his boss explosions and stuff. That's good. Ah, uh, hope he doesn't have a death animation. <laughs> he just sits there the whole time. Yeah. I don't know what else to do with this guy right now except for to go take a break. This I, this acid dungeon's good though. It's getting the, I've got it started, right? Things are looking okay with the acid dungeon. They got this nice green color scheme started. Um I'm happy with all the colors. The dark rooms are kind of neat. The open walls are neat. This is probably my favorite room in this dungeon right here. I like this one. All right, well, I think I'm I think I'm that's going to be it for now. I got to just I got to take a break. It's Friday. I want to like go cook some food or something, just relax cuz this boss is kind of freaking me out. <laughs> I'm kind of intimidated to create this boss cuz he's so the vision for him is is really going to take a lot of code. So, I need to really take a break and just like not think about him for a minute. And then come back to it with a fresh mind and figure out what's going wrong with the children thing. And 
decide how to do the death spawn thing feature or whatever and all that so right the answer will come the answers will all, they always come they always will so but anyways to, tomorrow or whenever i do my next stream it will be it will probably be related to this boss and hopefully by then he looks a lot better so Oh, salad dongs. Maybe rather than relying on parenting, you could just model the snake as a link list. Oh, so it's, it'd be kind of like automatic. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, thanks guys. Thanks a lot. Have a good have a good night, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Next stream will probably maybe to be tomorrow. I'm not exactly sure, but for you guys that just joined the stream for the first time here, my streams are always about this time, usually about five days a week or so. So. Cheers, everybody. Have a good night.